Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Young at Heart, children's stories, songs, poems, and nursery rhymes to keep us all young at heart on this day, a special day for many of us, Easter Sunday. I'm recording at about 4.45 p.m. on Easter Sunday, wishing you all a joyful, happy, prayerful, peaceful, and healthy Easter Sunday is my prayer for you all. When I finished yesterday, I offered you a riddle from one of the Mother Goose books, and I promised to let you know what the answer to that riddle is. If you weren't with me yesterday, it's a very, very short riddle. I'll uh, repeat it now. It was called In Marble Halls. I need my glasses. There we go. In marble halls, as white as milk, lined with a skin as soft as silk, with a fountain crystal clear, a golden apple doth appear. No doors there are in this stronghold, yet thieves break in and steal the gold. You may remember some of the clues. This is an item that you might have found in your Easter basket this morning, and if not, perhaps you found it buried somewhere on your back lawn or front lawn, if you have a lawn, or buried somewhere in your apartment or house. The answer, an egg, because the hard shell is the marble hall in their lining, the inner lining of the shell is soft as silk. The crystal clear um, liquid is the white of the egg, and the golden apple, of course, is the yolk. Well, I promised I'd have an Easter story for you, and this one I've chosen by Carol Hollander. She was an English woman. She lived from 1901 to 1954. She was a Roman Catholic. She had a very, very strong faith. And she wrote this story called Petuk, an Easter story. There's her name. And guess who our illustrator is? Someone I mentioned the other day. None other than Mr. Tommy DePaola, one of my favorite children, authors, children's authors, and illustrators. And he's known for his beautiful illustrations. No, he died a few weeks ago, so we, I can picture them today at Easter Sunday conversing in heaven, Tommy and Carol and all the wonderful people who've been young at heart their whole lives, having communion with all the saints in heaven. So that too is a wonderful Easter thought, is it not? The story's a little long, so I'm going to do it in sections, but I'm not going to make you wait each day. In order that the videos upload readily, I'll read a few pages, then stop, and then I'll record another one. So if you wish, you may watch the whole story all through the day, or watch a little bit at a time, as you wish. Okay? So here we go. Petuk, an Easter story. Here's the title page. I remember when I was a kid, our teachers told us, always read the title page. It has important information, and it's things we don't want to take for granted. Too often, don't you find you read a book and you forget who wrote it? That's not good, because we're getting a little bit of their heart and soul in every one of their stories. And also, we can be thankful for the publishers. If you notice, this one was by Holiday House published in New York. This copy was published, if you see the copy right there, 1988. So I hope that when you read a book, you'll take time to read the title page, see who the publisher is, and you know, the more these publishers publish books that we like, and we tell them, the more likely they're going to give us more kind of, same kind of books that we like. So here we go. Petuk, an Easter story. It was a lovely, warm day. 
The sky was bright blue and the clouds white and thick like balls of cotton wool. Everything seemed full of color, big, happy colors, like in a painting book. Even the maize in the bowls for breakfast was yellower than usual. And here we have the pictures by Tommy DePaolo. De Paula. <laughs> there we have it. A beautiful, beautiful day. You see the flowers, and do you see the cypress trees? They're very, very common in Italy, and Tommy De Paola has some Italian ancestry, and he often evokes images from Italy in his paintings. Now, here's very interesting. We see the breakfast bowls, and uh, Carol, she gave us uh, bowls filled with maize. Now, it's interesting that she used that word, maize, because it's pretty much, a, it's a Spanish word uh, that's very w much used in Mexico and Central and South America, where the natives there called their uh, corn maize. And yet she used it too. Very interesting. But I love corn porridge. I love cornmeal. I love polenta, which is the Italian cornmeal, and I also love, you know what else is made out of cornmeal? Grits. Grits are tasty as well. I especially like my grits with cheese. What about you? Have you ever had cornmeal, polenta, or grits? Tasty is the word I like to use for them. Now, petuk was a rooster and he was very happy and he had reason to be he was a fine cock with snowy white plumage just like mine today <laughs> and a red comb which i don't have that positively glowed in the sun and today he became the father of ten little chickens he thought that there were no chickens like them, none so round, so yellow, so fluffy, so bright-eyed. And as for his wife, Martha, the brown speckled hen, plain and homely soul though she was, she had become all grand and important. So, here we go. First you see Petuk and his happiness over his chicks. And there, I think I get them both in the picture. And there's his wife. I guess he's a little too proud to think his wife being homely. But she's very happy, too, to have delivered all these wonderful little chicks. There we go. Two more pages, and then... We'll stop and I'll make a new recording of the rest. During the past weeks, Petuk had sometimes felt a little impatient. It seemed that Martha had some secret that she did not share. It made her very happy, but it also made her look almost smug, and in a, it annoyed Petuk to be outside of the secret. Martha had just sat on the eggs with a tiny smile on her face and her eyes nearly shut as if she were looking into herself at a ball of light that was growing inside of her. Not talking, not moving, only making a funny little sound of happiness in her throat now and then. But now Petuk understood. It was he who was smiling and so bursting with pride and joy that he could not speak. And here we have Martha clucking, purring almost, although wouldn't say purring. What animal purrs? It's not a chicken, no but she's making that little kind of gurgle 
in her throat, which chickens do. She does seem so happy and content. Okay, now this must be another set of eggs after the ones that just hatched. They're going to have an awful lot of children, aren't they? Well, Petuk was sitting on the wooden gatepost, dreaming of his family, when a group of hens ran up to him. Come! They clucked. Some stranger has been walking through the vineyard. Petuk, who was as inquisitive as any hen, though he would not have liked to be known for it, got up at once and hurried off with the others. And here's the hen sharing some interesting news with Petuk. There we go. He is a very, very proud looking rooster, isn't he? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll stop there, and now I'll make another recording of some more pages, which you can choose to watch as soon as they're uploaded, or wait for another day when you have some more time. It's great being with you on this Easter Sunday. You see I'm wearing my Easter white and my clerical shirt. It's a very holy, happy, prayerful day that we know that even in death, life is changed. It's not ended, and we're more connected with heaven the holy, the beautiful, the true, and the good than we can ever imagine. But let's keep imagining, shall we? It will keep us young at heart. God bless you, everyone. Happy Easter, happy Passover, whatever your celebration today may be. God bless. Stay healthy. See you soon. Bye.